Hello? Hey, Vincent, it's Rowan from Silver Tiger Media. How are you? I'm very good, man. How's it going? Excellent. What a treat to speak with a musician of such magnificent creative talent. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, man, you, you flatter me. <laughs> oh, what a career. Really? Congratulations. I've got you up to all the girls. <laughs> no, all the girls I do, but only select blokes. <laughs> now, tell me, my friend, what happened to the name Pagan Angel? Uh, really? Are we going to go there? No, we don't have to. It's all right. <laughs> I'll try this one on you. How did you start in music? Um, so we were two families um, who grew up immersed in music since uh, as far as back as we can remember it was, it was kind of one of those things where um, I think family members pointed it out before we did you know, oh, those nice. guys are going to be musicians um, and um, I don't know I think it's just because we were really massively into it but we didn't actually I didn't actually really start playing guitar until I was about 15 oh, before, okay. that, before that I wanted to be a drummer um, really yeah, but, uh, you know, like, drums are loud and expensive, so that kind of, that didn't really work. <laughs> and it's, it's a bit of a cliche, out, isn't it, being from Liverpool and playing the drums? I mean, really? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just, uh, <laughs> just uh, It just seemed like a good thing to do. Well, what do you do for a living? Oh, I just hit stuff, you know. That's, that's cool. <laughs> Brilliant. But, um, yeah, so I, I think... When we, when we very first started out, Rolly, it was only Danny who actually had a guitar. You know, he'd been playing for a couple of years. He got pretty nifty. And the rest of us, um, me and John, both wanted to be the drummer, but we couldn't. And I knew a few chords, so I was like, okay, I'll play guitar, you know. Um, and to, the first thing, the very first things we did were these, um, like, kind of a little kid's Fisher Price tape recorder uh, that Darren had, our old singer. And we just wow. made tapes on that, just... Um, joke songs, you know, like like Monty Python style humour, um, <laughs> taking the piss, uh, having a laugh. And we actually, we didn't have a drum kit at the time, so what we'd do is we'd actually hit, we had a pair of drumsticks that we'd hit on the couch, put a magazine on the, on the seat cushion for the snare, and <laughs> use the, uh, the back of the couch for the toms and that, you know. And, Magnificent. Um, and that was it. That's how we started. So we started like that. And um, then we got, we said, okay, well, let's do this properly. I think the only reason we did that was because some girl was having a birthday party and um, some band was playing and we said, can, can we play your birthday party? She goes, have you got a band? We said, yeah. And we <laughs> didn't really. <laughs> so it was, it was, we had about two months to get some equipment and get some songs together, which we did. And that was the start of the band. And about a year later, we had a friggin' record deal. We were going on tour. It was bonkers. Oh, what a fantastic story. Magnificent. And we just... <laughs> We just fell into it. Like I remember when we got the record deal, um, we we signed the record deal for four albums, and we didn't have any songs. We, we had a few, like, and um, like, okay, well, we'll just fucking write some, won't we? We went into the studio. <laughs> we went to the studio to record Serenade, and it was all brand new stuff. We'd never we'd never rehearsed it. We just like, kind of got it together, and um, and then that was like immediately we were so cocky as well, like because. It wasn't immediately like album of the month and in in some magazines and things like that. We're like, yeah, of course, <laughs> <laughs> naturally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, oh, that, that, coming from Liverpool, right? That's that's kind of like an attitude thing, you know. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are cocky and arrogant, and and uh, you know, uh, it's just kind of natural. We were like that to begin with, I and mean, we we just. Um, we we knew as well from the very early days that we would never stay in one place, you know, with the music, that we always had this idea that we would expand it into something else. And um, so, but the funny thing was, we, we kind of got, um, it got picked up in the press, but that, like this, this new genre of music that kind of bought some Paradise Lost and My Diamond Bride and bands like that were, were kind of yeah. pioneering at the time. And we, um, as quickly as they picked up on it, we'd already left. You know, because oh. we didn't want to, we didn't want to be pigeonholed. You know, so yeah. we just we expanded it out somewhere else, and and it's been going ever since. And now it's like completely, um, it's, um sonically, it's a, it's in a whole different universe now. Oh, absolutely, and I can't agree more. I mean, let's face it: if I say something bad about your album, I, you'll come out here and give me the old Liverpool kiss. 
<laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm all right with that, to be honest with you. I, to be honest with you, right, I, I'm probably a worse critic of our music than anyone else. You know, I like, if I make a record that um, I'm happy with, it's a very, very rare occur- occurrence. I think the closest I ever came was the first album, and I think probably because it's your first album, you know. I was, yeah. I was made up with that when, but I was only like, I was just a kid at the time. And then probably Weather Systems, like, I, we got close to it again on that one. Um, but none of the others I've been happy with. None of them. Yeah. You know, and it's one of those look, things where, um, you know, it, it, it kind of spurs you on. Uh, you indeed. Know, you, always, you, you always want to do better next time out, and you always think you can. You know, I always sure. absolutely feel we can do better next time out, and it's... You, yeah. You've always struck me as being your own, I don't want to say worst, I want to say best critic, because you keep driving the whole group along so very well. Yeah, we push each other. Like, if there's an internal thing as well, like, you know, like, I know if somebody's in danger of repeating themselves as a writer, so I'll force them out of that, you know what I mean? I'm kind of, um, I'm a bit like, I'm a bit more of a, a kind of a, a producer as well as, uh, you know, uh, especially for Danny and John's stuff. Sure. John's especially yeah. because um, John's John's ideas are, um, they're brilliant, but it's like to him, it's it, it's like trying to, trying to make it make sense and make it a, an actual demo of one of John's tunes. It's, it's like trying to nail a cloud to a wall. Do you know what I mean? It's just wow. not there. Yeah. And you've yep. got to, you've, you've got to kind of, I've got to kind of make sense of it and, get my brain, my organizational brain around it and say, okay, it's like this. And Danny's the opposite. Danny's like very, very prolific and he writes um, he writes all the time and he's a very, very talented pianist. He's a very talented guitarist. But what he'll find himself um, doing is he'll, he might find himself in some certain repetitive patterns, whether it's chord progressions or arpeggios or whether it's just a style of a song or a style of writing. And I'll force him out of that. I'll say, okay, you know what, right? You can do that, but like this, you know. And to, like I'll I'll introduce him to different ways of of finding sounds and you know and a, a, diff, a different starting point for a song. And I think that's sure. going to be um, important for the next album. You know where we go from here. Um, it's it's I think it's going to be very important to 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 to, to have a different starting point. As opposed yeah. to just you know sitting down, okay, I'm gonna write, um, I'm gonna write, um, you know, a dark piano tune, you know. I'm glad you say that because I was going to ask you about where do you head from here. So that's a, a very interesting insight. All those years yeah. ago, when when Darren White left, was it more a, a matter of necessity or opportunity that saw you taking over vocals? Uh, it's ne- it's a bit of both, I guess. I mean, we were actually in the studio doing the second album, we'd spent a couple of weeks on, on Daz's vocals and it just wasn't working out. I mean, I think even by his admission, we, 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 he, he didn't get a fair crack really because we, um, we didn't rehearse any of the stuff. It was another one of those where we turned up in the studio without any songs and, um, and we had to improvise it. So it, within 10 days, we basically recorded the whole record, wrote it and recorded the whole fucking record, which, even surprised us, like, how well it turned out. And we were like, okay, Dad, it's your turn now. And he's like, he's kind of thrown in the deep end, you know, like, okay, there's the music. Um, It's brand new. Write some vocals, you know, and it it wasn't, that's not necessarily easy. Of course. Um, And it just didn't, it it just didn't work out. So we were in the studio, we're like, okay, well, let's try something else. And we had to write a whole new set of lyrics and, I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest with you, at the beginning. I was, I was nominated to be the singer because nobody else, because we needed somebody and nobody else was available. And the other guys thought I could do it. I didn't want to be a singer at all. Oh, I okay. The idea. Uh, yeah. There yeah, we go. Uh, and now, of course, I'll Lee brings it, about... Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I like it now, yeah. <laughs> at the time, I was like, oh, fuck. And of course, Lee Douglas brings about a, a, an extra dimension. How did that come about to her taking a, a vocals uh, role? Well, she's um, she's John's sister, you know. So of course, yeah. When she was there, we we go out like let's say we go out on a Saturday night, me, me, John, and Danny, and sometimes we'd stop over at John's, 
And um, so you'd be waking up um, with a bit of a hangover. And all of a sudden, there's this voice coming from the kitchen. And it's Lynn <laughs> singing along to Tori Amos when she's um, she's making a piece of toast. Oh, wow. Well. Okay, now, is that, that, that Lee? <laughs> you know, I've known, I've known Lee since she was nine years old. It's like, since when has she been able to do that? <laughs> oh, yeah, she's pretty good, isn't she? Well, fucking hell, let's get her in the band. <laughs> it took us years. It took us years to convince her. You know, she wasn't really confident at first. You know, she didn't really want to do it, you know. And yeah. And uh, she's, she's grown into it these last couple of years. And she's been more like a permanent member, I'd say, since 2012. But before that, it was like just constant. Like, we, we'd get her to, to sing one track here or there, to back and vocals, or take the lead on a certain track. Um, and she and she would do some gigs with us, but she would she wasn't she wasn't quite ready to make that professional step until about three years ago, and then she just kind of now she's she's loving it now, like you know. So I think a lot of it comes from her. A lot of it, it um, uh, just her being ready now, you know, ready yeah. to to be um, a kind of you know a, a professional. Absolutely, and carries herself so very well now. There's no two ways about it. Yeah, you yeah, would, yeah. You'd imagine with so many family ties, it would be inevitable to bring about friction. How do you keep it all together and everyone moving forward? You've got to you've got to look after each other. You know, your family first and bandmates second. You know, and there's nothing more important than your family and friends in life. And if you don't look after each other, then there's something wrong. And if if you don't like each other and you're in a band. Um, and the band is keeping you together, then uh, uh, there's something wrong there. You know, it can it can have it can have um, you know uh, in some ways it might it might help things if you're forced to work together and you know you can eventually work it out. But really, you know, you've got to remember that your your family first and foremost. I think that's what we do. I mean, like to be honest with you, I'm I'm really super close to Danny and Jay for yeah. completely different reasons. You know, like Jamie's like like best mate you know I'll ring up Jay and we won't we won't it, the, the fact that we're in a band together won't even come up in the conversation you know it'll just be like you, me and him having a laugh and that you know yeah. but with me yep. and Danny we're, we're real partners you know and um, so we, we've got that we've got that family side to us and that mate side to us as well but we are very we're both very driven and quite intense about what we do so we're we're real partners you know like and it's that's important as well. So it's a totally different relationship. But you've just got to look after each other at the end of the day. Oh, beautifully said. A, a very nice turn of phrase indeed. And now, with your plethora of, of incredible music over such a long period of time, is there a particular show that really stands out to you personally as being of paramount importance? A show? Um, importance? Um... It's a tough question. I, I like to, our first ever, first ever headline show in New York City was great. Right. And, um, and in Los Angeles, because we, we'd sold out in New York and LA and Chicago on our first ever tour. That was, that was unreal, you know, to do that. And it's like somewhere I've always wanted to go, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's so many, so many great gigs. Um, in, but like our show in Sydney last time, that was sold out as well. It's unbelievable. You know, like to, to finally get to Australia and see there's so many people who who, who know your stuff. Because we we were kind of isolated from our audience. You know, we um, we never really had any deal over there. We never really did many interviews. We never we never spoke to anybody. We didn't really know what was going on. Yeah. So to turn up and see that many people was was mind blowing. And I think you know there's other other venues and, and moments that stand out. Obviously the Plovdiv. Um, Concerts in 2012 with the orchestra that was filmed for the Universal DVD. Yeah. Um, a couple of times in Chile. Um, Chile's always amazing. Um, we've uh, we've played Liverpool Cathedral, um, which was a, a milestone really. Um, Liverpool Cathedral is this immense, immense building in, um, and it's we, we just filmed that for a new DVD that's coming out later in the year. Wonderful. And. Um, yeah, there's a few to come. You know, there's. Um, I remember once we played this. Um, we played this old ruin of a church in the in the middle of Transylvania. Um, ah. Um, and it was up on on the, on this kind of big hill, right? Like a lot of uh, churches were made in those days. You know, they like just. Uh, so it was difficult to access. You, there was no roads up there. You could you had to physically walk.
walk up, like half an hour climb oh, to the God. top of this hill where there's where there was this chest. So like, and there's no electricity there, of course, you know, and it's basically just a shell, no windows, nothing. It's barely got a roof, you know. So, um, so the, like all the gear, the generator and the PA and everything else had to be physically carried up the hill. Um, we got there, and um, it was really cool because it was a very different atmosphere. We were just kind of hanging out with the audience outside. And then we'd go in and play this gig, like candlelight. And at the very, oh very God. end of the show, we um, were just about to hit the last chord. I think we were we were actually doing um, a cover version of Pink Floyd at the time. We were just about to hit the last chord, and there's a massive thunder strike with uh, lightning and thunder, uh, which basically closed the show for us. Oh, my know, God. We, it's, it's on YouTube. Um there's nothing, we could never, ever predict anything like that. Yeah, of course. It's like those fireworks going off in the plot, this thing, like, you, there's moments like that that you can't predict and that, that just happen, and uh, they stay with you for the rest of your life. Oh, of course it would, too. That'll be some deity up there expressing his gratitude for your show. <laughs> well, that's, you know, we kind of jokingly said that at the time, Um but, uh, yeah, it's on YouTube, actually. Um, I'll, I'll have to find a link and put it up someday. Oh, we'll but, have to uh, have a look yeah, at that. It's, yeah. It's, and look, it's, yeah, from it's, serenades to distant satellites, you, you have just such, had such a brilliant career and produced such prodigious work. We're extremely thrilled that you're coming out to see us again on the 27th of October, starting in Adelaide. Thank you so very yeah. much. <laughs> Man, it's, um, it's going to be a pleasure to... Uh, I'm really looking forward to the fact that we've actually got a bit more time on this tour. Indeed, yeah. and we've got a bit of time to market you before you get here too, but it'll still be sold out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Wonderful. Well, look, I realise you're pressed for time. Thank you so much for your time chatting with us today. You're welcome. And we'll look forward to seeing you later on in the year. Okay, man. Take it easy. Have a good one. Cheers. Thank you. Travel safely, my friend. Nice one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.